Hello, welcome to the Free Will Science and Religion Podcast. I'm Chandler Klebs, and I'm here with George Ortega, Nick Vale, and Jamie Soden. And we're going to talk about how our thoughts are not our choice. Our thoughts are not up to us. Um, and this is very plain, because if you try to not think, tell me how that works out for you. If you try to not think about anything, well then... Uh -huh you end up thinking about not thinking about anything, and you're thinking about how well you're doing and not thinking anything. <laughs> I tried this. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Our thoughts pop into our heads, and often people feel guilty for having a thought. You know, they may, may, they may mm -hmm, think, mm -hmm. they may... They may, in their mind, they may be judging a person like, well, this person did a stupid thing. They shouldn't have done this. Well, of course, people, you're not as judgmental when you understand that people don't have a free will. But, you know, um, I used to feel guilty. Like, I used to feel like, you know, I hated certain people for things that they were doing wrong, you know, and blaming them. But then I felt um, guilty like, oh, no, I'm a judgmental jerk. And so then I started self blaming myself for my thoughts about things. Um, and that's another thing is we understand that people, they, they don't choose their thoughts because their thoughts, just like anything else, has to come from prior causes. Um, and almost always your thoughts come from something in your environment. Any word that you speak, well, where did you hear that word? You know, anything that anyone says or, you know, they heard that. And you can tell, you know, like when um, any so any song you sing, well, where did you hear that song? There's a cause for why you're singing that song. You know, a anything at all. And all right, so the channel, I just wanted to key us in. So, like, basically, this is about thought crime and all. And I just wanted to kind of, like, just basically explain that, like, in, logically, in Judaism... It was like if a person committed an act, that was wrong. That was a sin, right? But then when Christianity came along, I don't know if you remember any passages, Jesus saying like, you know, even if you think this thought, it's a crime. You know, like this was something new to Christianity. So like, I think the thought crimes, at least in the, I yeah. know, I'm aware of, that's how it evolved. And so like, let's explore actually this concept of thought crime. Let's say, for example, a married couple, right? And um, and one of the spouses, they have continual thoughts of cheating. They have lust, like um, um, serious thoughts about other people all the time. You know, lustful thoughts about other people. Um, mm -hmm. So, but they never do anything about it. Now the question becomes: Well, is that like, let's say you're married to someone like that who's doing that all the time? Would you, as um, as Are you're cutting you know, out, George. It, some of the times your, your audio is cutting out. Yeah, I can't hear them. Yeah, sorry, but basically consider, all right, would you can? oh, I don't know, I'll just go on, guys. Um, uh, um, get me back on, I'm off, just get me back on, right, uh, Chandler? Yeah, you you say you're going to get off and get back on, okay. Yeah, um, George, uh, his audio was cutting out really badly, however, I, I think I know where he was going, and hopefully he'll be able to get back on. But yeah, Christianity, certain passages in the Bible made thinking thoughts a crime, having lustful thoughts. And I've definitely read those parts of the Bible, uh, in like Matthew chapter 5, where, where I've read them. Sure. So do we, yeah, I'm, I'm back. I, I think I hope, hopefully I got a better connection. Hope and so. It, like, if, you're, if you're married to a person, you know, and they're, you know, they're, they're having like lustful thoughts about other people all the time. And let's say they never do anything about it, but let's say they admit it to you. Let's like, you know, I mean, would, might, might a person not feel kind of like, well, this person doesn't really, you know, care about me if, if the thoughts. So I, I wonder if many kinds of thoughts, you know, are completely innocent. Perhaps others are not. Huh. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Um, because, there's always a cause for these thoughts. And what's interesting is, yeah, like you said, you know, um, Christianity has made it a tradition for people to feel um, bad about having certain thoughts. Um, like, and that's kind of a weird thing 
Um, because I think that the thoughts are helpful in a sense that you can think, well, I'm having this thought. Why am I having this thought? And you can then have, you can think about your thoughts and then it's through thinking about those thoughts that help you perhaps prevent, prevent yourself from doing what you might be thinking of doing. So it's absolutely actually, yes. Yep. But Chandler, yeah. In other words, we, you know, this this issue of free will is very helpful to the the thought crimes issue because you're right. If to the extent that, like, you know, I think some, you know, in other words, like if you fire somebody, if you have, you know, if you're on a job and you fire somebody because you don't like their race or you don't like their the, the fact that they're gay or something, you know, you're firing them based on the thought. And I, I granted, I guess in that case, the the um. The crime is the firing them, but the thought is important. In other words, the thought is like, so like, while we can acknowledge that that they're not to blame fundamentally because they don't have a free will, you know, the person who did this thing, but then I think we, we still need to explore like our thought crimes, our thumb, some, our, some thoughts, you know, criminal. In other words, like, you know, the thought that leads, you know, an employer to fire an employee because they're gay, because they're a minority. I mean, like, could do we need to consider those thoughts as as like as criminal or prejudicial or biased? Well, they're definitely biased and prejudicial, um, but we also have to understand, you know, those people. There's some reason that they have that particular prejudice. Why they would discriminate against somebody for that, and what's it's kind of hard to identify it. You know what I mean? Like if somebody does fire somebody from a job, they're not required to give a reason. You know, like that's what they'll say is like, you know, yeah. we may terminate your employment at any time for any yeah. reason or no reason at all. Right. But let's say let's let's say we had a, a lie detector test. Let's say we, we can subject the person to a lie detector test and it comes out in court or something that they fired this person because the person was black or or Hispanic or something. Then, so like, in other words, like the firing wasn't what, you know, what's really wrong. It seems like what was wrong was the reason the person was fired, which is a thought. It, it's kind of like a belief or an attitude. So I, I think in certain cases, you know, it's not just the act, but actually the, the thought that, that, that can be um, a source of um, what, whatever we uh, just define as immoral or wrong. Yeah, I get what you're saying now because... It's not the fact that this person fired somebody from their job. It's the reason for why they fired them. Because there can be a wrong reason for firing someone from their job. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that if somebody is identified as being unfair and firing somebody for something like that, for being black or for being for being gay or whatever, well, somebody, that 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 employer needs to be removed from that position really if that's if that's possible to do because that's that's not good you know what i mean that's really not a good thing well here's the thing under the free will belief i mean we we we, we reach that conclusion or we want to do that quickly and all because in a certain sense we're blaming that person it was like they're doing something wrong they need to be punished and all but i have i think a lot of times a person may be unwilling to reveal the fact that they're having these thoughts like that because of the free will belief. In other words, like if tomorrow we woke up and nobody believed in free will and somebody was having these thoughts about possibly firing somebody because they were gay or black, or whatever, then they may they may be able to like more like safely talk about that with others, you know, kind of like admit it, and that might lead them to, to be able to like not act upon it. Whereas like when it's kept in secret because of the free will belief, because of the fear of indictment and blame, that it ultimately eventually manifests as the firing, as the actual wrong. Yeah, you're right. Because when problems are just kept secret, then there's nothing that can be done about them. And I think one of the greatest problems is that when, yeah, when people fear that someone's going to blame them and and do and punish them in some way for something, well, they tend to keep it hidden for that reason. Um, so yeah, um, it, it's kind of difficult about how this this could be handled. And we're and what's interesting is that we understand that 
we're not blaming anybody for having the thoughts we have, but we can identify certain thoughts and reasons they would have for doing things they do that are harmful to society. And that's why we would want to put a stop to it. And we would perhaps try to reason with those people if that's possible. Yeah. And again, like, so again, this is about thought crimes. And like, I just thought of another example of kind of like a thought that is like, you know, is immoral. It's wrong. In other words, a lot of people don't like themselves. Okay. They, you know, it's not like they, they simply don't like themselves. And I mean, I, I'm not going to call that an immoral in terms of right and wrong, but you can certainly call it uh, kind of like negative. It's not a and so like, this, is a, a, this is an example of a thought that, that doesn't really manifest in an action like firing someone. But, you know, to the extent a person doesn't like themselves, that makes it much harder for that person to be happy, to feel happy. So, mm -hmm. so basically, yeah, it's, it's another example of a thought that, um, you know, sometimes these disadvantageous, even though, even though they're so, I mean, because like, you know, basically, I think, I think we have to acknowledge that with, with most, you know, the idea of a thought crime is like a lot of times we all, it's because we don't have a free will that these, these like criminal thoughts come into our minds. In other words, like, we see like a lot of people killing each other. So we come out of the theater and a thought pops into my mind. Yeah, I wish I could kill this person, that whatever. So like, and these thoughts, you know, if, 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 you under, if you believe you have a free will, you attribute or blame that person for the thought. If you understand that we're just conditioned robots, that what, what we see and perceive and all comes, you know, just comes at us, not that we will it, then, then, then we can like... Oh man, you're cutting out again. I'm not hearing what you're saying. This stuff is going on. Yeah, extent, George, you're cutting out like crazy. For it. Uh, yeah, George, you're cutting out. All right, well, you guys go on. Yeah, I don't know what's what's up with that because George is saying all this awesome, important stuff, and then his audio is cutting out. Um, and see, that's another example of something not in our control of, about internet connections. Um, yeah, I'm I'm trying to to I tried to figure out exactly where he was going with what he was saying. Um, I'm back, but I'm not going to talk much for you. Like, He's yeah. saying that uh, people who don't like themselves can't be happy, but it's not up to them. So I guess it's a question of just feeling unlucky for not liking yourself. There's well, nothing it's... you can do about it. If you don't like yourself, it's not, you know, it's not something you're willing. It's just unlucky that you don't like yourself, and therefore it becomes unlucky that you can't be happy. Well, that's true, Nick, but you know what? It perhaps... I'm, I'm, you know... I'm, a perfect, I'm a perfect example right now with this recent breakup I'm going through. Oh. Um, this is why I haven't been around. Oh. Um, so I'm very. I feel very unlucky. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It's, it's almost unlucky, like the, it's almost like the universe is picking on me. That's what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, we've all felt that way. I'm sure. Um, About the yeah. question of degree. I'm sure we all feel like that. You know where. We feel like the world's against us. That's what we get. That's why we get depressed. You know? Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say that you know, if people understood that we don't have a free will, perhaps they would not dislike themselves. Perhaps a lot of the reason some people may not like themselves is because they're blaming themselves for things, attributing free will to themselves. And think, oh, I'm not a very good person because I can't do this or I did this. I shouldn't have done that. Right. And so I think if, that a low self-esteem or self-hatred also sometimes stems from free will belief. And, of course, other times it might just be because you feel like the universe is picking on you. Well, of course, if you're saying if only this, if only that, you're really experiencing the emotion of regret. Which means you could have done otherwise, which doesn't make any sense if you don't believe in free will. You could not have done otherwise. Therefore, there wouldn't be any regret. And there wouldn't be, if only this happened, then you wouldn't have left me. But yet, I still find myself doing that. Which is, yeah, that's very weird. bizarre since I'm supposedly one of the no free will gurus on this planet. So I don't know what to think about how unlucky I am that I can't stop thinking that way. Yeah, um... That's interesting because, you know, um, 
we we've done podcasts before about some of our regrets, things we that we regret, and yeah. we know logically that we couldn't have done otherwise. And so that's but, but emotionally, I don't feel that way. Yeah, and you know that's interesting because um, yeah, logically, yeah, but I'm talking about emotions. Yeah, there's a there's a separation there between what you know that you couldn't have done otherwise, but right. then at the same time you feel like you like you you wish you had done otherwise. Well, I know if I was in the same situation in the future, I would do otherwise, but that small consolation to, you know, losing a girlfriend for six years. I mean, now I got to wait for the next time. That could be 10, 15 years that I wouldn't do the same thing that I did this time. So my berating myself and beating up on myself is valuable and the regret is valuable so I can condition myself not to do it the next time, but there may not be a next time. That is kind of sad when you put it that way. I mean, this is because... The yeah, ten year, it's a ten-year lesson. By the, the way, I, I'm hearing an echo every okay. time. Every time Nick talks, and I hear it coming from wherever George is. It's called oh, George is in the other room here. He, we're in the same apartment. Yeah. yeah, and I'm still hearing you through his end too. That's weird. Um, yeah, makes a little bit of sense though, because he's here. Yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying, Nick, because in most things little regrets that we have, the same situation will come up again in the future and we know that. So we can we can do differently in a similar situation in the future than we did in the past. Because right. You but if it. the situation is so unbelievably rare, then you gotta wait you know, you might it, it, it makes me depressed because it could be 10, 15, 20 years for me to get back to that point that I was at. So other regret is valuable because you can change your your behavior in the future, but it might be next week or a few days or next month. But when you have such a terrible thing that you do and you don't feel like you can rectify it or learn from it and it's like a many, many year lesson, then it really makes you depressed because it's really worthless. Why? Who wants to wait 15 years to be in the same situation? Well, I totally... You got to meet, meet another girl. You got to date her for six years. You got to think she was cheating when she wasn't and yell at her. I mean, the, the, the lesson that I'm learning is really not beneficial because it's so rare. Right. I get what you're saying because the same situation won't happen. Right. Um, if, That's if, where the depression's coming from, exactly. Yeah, I get what you're saying there. And so that's an example of a regret that doesn't help condition us in any nece necessary way, um, at least not for right. some time. And so those regrets are the kind that we most need to be absolved from. We need to be uh, mm. to somehow where it doesn't bother us uh, regrets of things in the past. And or it's, or it's faded that I would ruminate over it over and over again and perseverate and obsess over what I could have done otherwise. But I have to remember my obsession is also faded. So uh, that might help to take the sting out a little bit that my obsession going over the same thing over and over again, how I ruined my life, those thoughts are faded and I'm unlucky. Not that I should hurt myself or hurt her or do anything stupid because the whole situation was faded. But I do feel very unlucky that it happened to me, that I saw these pictures on the internet or whatever and thought what I thought. Yeah, well, you know... Because, you know, the damage is done. You know, in Buddhist circles, they always say, once you ring a bell, you can't unring it. So if you say vicious, horrible things to someone and say, well, it was faded, I, I didn't have a free will, she, she still hears those words and, uh, you know, feels terrible. You know, you, you scare her and then she's walking on eggshells and doesn't want to be with you. So you, just to say, well, I didn't have a free will, please excuse me, doesn't really work. Right. That is difficult because... Um... But she'll say, I'm faded not to want to be with you anymore because you said that. Wow. That way. Wow, man. Um, I'm fated to be alone. That's all there is to it. Yeah, and you know what, guys? This is a this is a fun example of thoughts that Nick is having of regret over the situation, even though it's not really helping him to regret this. Um, he can't. He he did not choose or will himself to have these thoughts of regret, just like he did not choose 
to um, to whatever happened that led to this regret in the first right. place. And so this is this is an example of why people can't be blamed for having their their thoughts, whether it's of regret or anything else. Yeah, but either way, I'm experiencing a loss. No matter what, no matter freely willed, freely willed or not, I'm experiencing a loss. So it's very bad. I mean, if you get in a car accident and lose your legs and it's not your fault, you're still experiencing the loss of your limbs. So it's depressing whether or not, you know, it's, pre you know, it's obviously predetermined, mm. but you still got to deal with the loss. Yeah. Yeah. In um, case of your situation, you know, you had an argument with someone and just the fact that both you and your partner remember the situation, that's the damage being done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What and do you do with the loss? You just accept it, I guess. You know what? This is a very interesting thing because, like, how do we handle this loss? Because now a lot of... I, 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 could, blame, I could blame the universe, clearly, but I don't know how that helps me. Right. We're, 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 we're trying to help people. If you lose something that's so valuable and you blame the universe, you still lose, you still, you're still unlucky. You still have lost it. Yeah, you know... You you can't it. turn back time and then redo it all. That, that's the frustrating part, I get. That. How can I redo it? She's gone. Yeah, because I've had arguments with my own family before. I've said horrible things about my own mother before and huh. regretted them afterwards, you know what I mean? And I, even though I'm sorry for them, I still think I shouldn't have said them in the first place, but I can't, like, you know, I can't take the, I can't take the past back. No, all but I've Jamie, you, you can't tell your mother, oh, please forget. It looks like Canada just scored. Okay, 2-1. It looks like you... Uh, if you tell your mother, oh, well, I'm sorry, I didn't have a free will, it really wasn't me, it's, you're still ruining the relationship. She's not going to accept that because she's going to remember what you, she's going to be walking on eggshells because thinking that you're going to, in a similar situation, say the same thing. Yeah. In other that's words, you're if you traumatize someone, I don't know how you can just blame the universe. Yeah, and that's partly why I get depressed. I mean, I suppose I could, you know, pass the blame onto the universe for it rather than on, rather than on myself. But you could. Still, you could. I... I, I still, I wish I took, could take back, I wish I could turn back time, you know, I mean, I wish I could just redo my life, you know, and oh. change, change things where I went wrong, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, the only way out of my situation would be a time machine. Mm. That's Same. true. Yeah. yeah, you know, so guys. Has your mother ever forgiven you for cursing her out or whatever you did? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, she's forgiven me for it, but still... I still regret them, you know what I mean? Because it's not nice for anyone to say horrible things about their own flesh and blood, you know? Well, the idea you got the whole, you got the whole walking on eggshells dilemma where mm. even if I say something to my ex-girlfriend and in a year or two she says, oh, well, all right, so I'll, I'll come back with you, she'll never mm. forget how viciously I verbally assaulted her or abused her. So mm. even if I blame the universe, you know, she still thinks I have the... Uh, the predisposition to maybe do it again, or I'm predisposed yeah. to, to 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 say such horrible things, which which I don't want to ever say about anybody. So yeah. once you say them, you can't take them back, even though it wasn't you; it was the universe. Mm. Yeah, you know, guys, this is a very interesting thing because a lot of the time. Um, Understanding that that free will it doesn't exist really helps us because we don't blame ourselves for mm -hmm. um, for things we've done in the past. However, it doesn't really take away the damage done by right. some of the things that we regret doing. Um, so this That's right, exactly right. Yeah. So this is so this is actually introduced as sort of a new topic because then how do we deal with this? Because Cause By the way, just so you know, my mother watches my show with George, and she says it's much better whenever we use practical, real, like we're talking about relationships here. You know, we, we talk in the abstract, but my mother watches a few times, and she says the show is very, very good when people can relate to how this affects them in a real practical, you know, right now I'm talking about a male-female breakup, and Jamie's talking about yelling at his mother or whatever. So actual relationships that relate directly to the no free will or free will paradigm would be, would listeners would really appreciate more practical, uh, you know, tangible solutions or how it affects their regular life in a concrete 
you know, let, so this topic is not abstract. It's very real. So keep, uh, I think it's very helpful. If I, if I were a listener, this is what I'd want to hear. How does, okay, I get it. There's no free will, but how does that change anything? Right. You know, Nick, you're absolutely right. We need to be using more examples like this. More examples, like a breakup, a fight, a, a yelling, more real examples, and then how to help people. Because I need yeah. help desperately. <laughs> I mean, I've had countless arguments with people, and um, I wish that, you know, most of these arguments never happened because, um, right. you know, I, I got on with, you know, mo most of the arguments that happened are people I get on with. You know what I mean? And, um, I wish I could just take it all back, but I, I think the only way to um, undo it all, I suppose, is to erase our memories. You know, I'm not. Well, I'm that's not, not possible. That's not possible. We're a time machine. The two well, solutions guys, don't. The two solutions don't exist. But guys, that why that's why we're doing this. Another is fine. We don't have a time machine, but to the extent we understand that nothing is up to them or up to us and all, that helps so much. It's not a complete answer, but it totally helps. Yeah. Well, no, because the receiving party of the verbal abuse can't just forget it. You could tell her, well, that wasn't me, that was the universe, but her nervous system is going to be uh, on eggshells or very nervous around you because she knows you can explode. And also, we don't have a neuralizer. The, 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 the conditioning, the conditioning model is there. Yeah, we can't just make people forget what happened. You know what I mean? They're still remembering it. That's the problem. And because they're still remembering what happened, that could surface sometime in the future into mm -hmm. another. Argument. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I agree with you guys. But the other thing is, like, to the extent we believe in free will, we often are not able to have the kinds of conversations that would would allow us to, like, maybe not forget but forgive. In other words, so, uh, so, George, are you saying if Anya really were convinced and understood on a very deep soul, true, fundamental level that neither I nor her nor Yale had a free will that she could forgive me? Absolutely. And if you you understand and, that and, and our relationship could continue after what I called her and everything. Yeah, because like if, if you like you understand we don't have free will, you understand it so strongly. But if you understood it completely, then you would have not like you know become angry with her, with her also. Because like again, you know, how could I it's not, not become angry? I thought she was cheating on me. What am I no, supposed I to say? Well, the idea is the, uni the universe is cheating on me. Yes, that's the thing. So the so like it so it would allow her to forgive you and allow not not even forgive to understand that none of this was up to you, either of you. So people can just cheat on each other and just say the universe uh, made me cheat? I mean, that's a little crazy. That doesn't seem to, that's not going to work. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, we still try to be as good as we can. But, you know, because we don't have a free will, we mess up sometimes. So, you know, as long as we understand. All right. We don't so maybe I should write her a letter saying, I understand the universe made you cheat on me or made me believe you were cheating on me. And the universe made me curse you out. So now what do we do? Talk. Talk, that's the thing. So it's like without the um, when people believe in free will, they don't get to that stage where they can talk things out and understand really what, what why the universe did this, why, you know. So like All right, so then in a few months I'm gonna ask her, can we just have a can we talk this out? This is crazy that we're not talking. There you go. She's gonna say, uh, uh, you're a deeply troubled in, you're a deeply troubled individual because you cursed me out without the facts. She could say that. All right, negative. I mean, obviously, it doesn't this doesn't stop everything, right? But I, it, it gives an opportunity for things to be explored. That the free will belief, because of the blame and the defense and the cr mm -hmm. criminations and all that, you know, the, the free will belief just makes it so much more difficult. I'll, all right, I'll try. I'll try it, but I don't think it's gonna. Yeah, well, you know what? I do. I agree with George that first of all, removing the fundamental blame from everyone, understand we don't have a free will, that it does help, but I also admit that it doesn't fix all our problems instantly. And so we're going to have to work on that. And perhaps we'll want to talk more about this in future podcasts. How can we can heal damaged relationships? Um, there, right. There's, there's got to be a way to do that. Um, we're out at, we're about at our 30 minute mark. Yeah, so. there's got to be a way to do it. You're right. Yeah. So, um, I I'll end this one, but then we can talk more about this afterwards. Okay. Okay. You've been listening to Free Will, Science and Religion with Chandler Klebs, George Ortega, Nick Vale, and Jamie Soden. And we're getting sort of into how our relationships will benefit with this no free will understanding. 
but maybe how we can go beyond that and heal damage relationships. We'll cover more of that in the future. Bye for now.